hello and welcome back to our last segment of this uh, of this regression video. Now we'll finally get around to answering here part B of this problem. Use the estimated regression equation to develop a confidence interval estimate of the average grade for somebody who studies five hours a week. Okay, so what we're doing here, remember, so we have this point estimate of this relation between uh, grade and number of hours spent studying. So our estimated regression equation had an intercept of negative 14.4, had a slope of 16.6. .6. Now, as we saw in our calculations that we did earlier, there's a great deal of uncertainty uh, in those estimates. And so what that means is that this line could be much flatter than it is, or it could be much steeper than it is. So as a point estimate, like any other point estimate that we've, that we've calculated, there's a lot of uncertainty, or at least there's some uncertainty uh, in that. Now, I've intentionally drawn these to cross at the same point because of the relationship between that y-intercept and the slope. When the slope is steeper, the y-intercept is less. When the slope is flat, the y-intercept is more. And as it turns out, these all cross at x bar and at y bar. So we have some uncertainty in that point estimate, which in this case, that point estimate is a line. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to use our estimated regression equation and calculate a confidence interval for a predicted value of y. So we need first as any confidence interval, we need a point estimate of y. So here we'll start with, um, let's see, we have someone who studies five hours a week. So five is gonna be out here, because I know going back to our data, our average number of hours spent studying was four, so here's five uh, is out here. So here's our five hours. Now what's the point estimate? In other words, given our point estimate of the relationship between hours spent studying and grade, what is that point estimate for, the, uh, for that individual's grade? So if we take that five hours and we put that into our estimated regression equation, here, let's call this y hat star. What this means is that for somebody who studies five hours a week, 14.4, that's negative, plus 16.6 .6 times 5, 68.9. So this means that on average, somebody who studies for five hours a week gets a grade of 68.9. So that's our point estimate, 68.9. Now we want to calculate a confidence interval around that point estimate. So here I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. So again, here's that point estimate, 68.9. We want to calculate what is the upper and lower limit to that point estimate, which as we can see, given the uncertainty in that slope, in those estimated parameters, well that introduces then, of course, uncertainty into that point estimate for the dependent variable. Okay, maybe it's somewhere down here, maybe it's somewhere up here, or anything in between. So now our formula for this confidence interval, as always, it's our point estimate, so y hat star, plus or minus critical value, so our critical value, degrees of freedom, alpha divided by 2, times, now our standard error will be a little bit different, it's a standard error of the estimate of the regression times the square root of 1 over n plus, here we have x star minus x bar squared over the sum of x i x bar squared. So this looks a little bit tedious. Now, one thing before we go any further, one thing that I want you to recognize here is that the width of this confidence interval changes for different values of x star. In here, x star was 5. 
Now, in this formula, we can see, well, what if x star is equal to that sample mean, or that mean value of our dependent variable? If that were the case, then this whole term here disappears, because that numerator would be equal to 0. And this interval estimate, plus or minus t alpha by 2, well, now it's going to look quite familiar. This is just the standard error of the estimate over the square root of the sample size. It looks, hopefully, it looks familiar to what we saw back in chapter 9, only we didn't have y hat, we had x bar. Notation has changed, context has changed, but the mathematics uh, is very consistent. Now, of course, as we move away from that sample mean, as we are going to do here, the uncertainty in those coefficients Right? The uncertainty of those coefficients leads to a greater level of uncertainty in our estimates. As we move away from x bar, that distance, that uncertainty gets larger and larger and larger. And so that is part of our calculation for the standard error. That distance between x star and x bar, the larger that distance gets, the greater is the standard error in our estimate. So let's, without further ado, plug in some numbers here. So here we had our point estimate was 68.9 plus or minus. Now this critical value, the degrees of freedom, corresponds with MSE, as always corresponds with our estimate of the variance. You'll notice that was also the same for when we did our t-statistics back a couple of videos ago. And so here, just as a refresher, this is probably already written on here, three degrees of freedom, uh, alpha 0.05, so alpha divided by two is 0.025. And so we'll use the same critical value that we used uh, in our previous work, uh, 3.182. So 3.182, that standard error of the regression that's this one here. That's 11.2 times the square root of 1 over sample size 5 plus here x star, our x star is 5. x bar, the, sa uh, the mean value for the independent variable was 4. And this piece here we calculated this in the very first video for this problem when we were calculating that slope coefficient. Remember, it was all of this stuff. The denominator for that calculation was exactly what we need here. And so I don't want to have to calculate again. I know that that was 6.2 when we calculated it in an earlier uh, video. So. Here we have it. Now let's go through. Let's uh, let's do this in some steps here because I don't want to make any silly mistakes. So let's start off with inside that square root. So five minus four squared. Well, that's one squared. That's just one. So this is going to be just one divided by six point two plus one divided by five. And we'll take the square root of that, and we'll times that by our standard error, 11.2. And we'll times that oops, by our critical value, which was 3.182. So there's that margin of error, 21.4. So this is 68.9 plus or minus 21.4. And now we can find our limits. So plus 68.9. So that upper limit is 90.3. Oops. And our lower limit, 68.9 minus 21.4 is 47.5. Well, there we go. We've got our confidence interval estimate for the average grade for somebody who studies five hours a week. 
So what we can pull from this, let's do it, let's look at a few things as far as our interpretation of this regression. Here we have our estimated regression equation where we could look at this equation and say, okay, on average for every additional hour that somebody works, the grade is increased, the average grade increases by 16.6 percentage points. Okay, so that's one use for that estimated regression equation, is just the interpretation of that coefficient itself. For each additional unit of change in our independent variable, the dependent variable increases by 16.6. Now we can also use it for estimation. So give me some value for the independent variable, here five, and I can estimate that the average grade for somebody who studies five hours a week is 68.9%. So I've got a point estimate of that average value of y. We can also calculate our confidence interval estimate. So here for somebody who studies five hours a week, my point estimate is that they will earn a grade of 68.9% on average. My interval estimate, for somebody who studies five hours a week, they will receive on average a grade between 47.5% and 90.3%. Okay, that's a lot to take in. I think that's the longest v set of videos I've made for one problem. So I hope that helped. I hope it wasn't too much. Um, but there's a lot of different parts of this regression analysis to go through. Now, the next few videos will have different bits of information in the output. And so it might be shorter, hopefully won't be longer. But uh, we'll get a little bit more practice with these. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, let's get into some more problems here. Bye-bye.